first presentation is uh, uh, by Dr. Well, apologize, I should have asked you. Randy Man. Yeah, well, I know Randy Man. So, <laughs> last name. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to try to repeat it. Uh, but uh, she's a postdoctoral researcher in uh, John Heminger uh, group. And uh, she's been doing this really fascinating experiments on spectroscopy of molecules on the surfaces of liquid jets. Uh, and uh, she is collaborating with Krista Perry, who is a, a graduate student in Dr. Bias lab. And th they've been using uh, the state-of-the-art methods to, to do molecular dynamic simulations to see how molecules actually move on the surfaces of the jets. And they're going to tell us all about it. Good afternoon. So here at AIUCI, we are really interested in looking at atmospheric interfaces. So for an example, um, marine algae releases iodine-containing compounds into the atmosphere, and uh, which then they uh, condense over the ocean aerosol layer. So these aerosol particles can then react with this uh, iodine vapor and create different chemical compounds that can counter, that can help counter global warming. So in order to understand these reaction mechanisms, it is really important to have a fundamental understanding of how, um, fundamental understanding of the surfaces of these type of uh, surfaces. So here we are going to describe two methods, one experimental method and one theoretical method uh, to gain a microscopic view of uh, these important surfaces. So, uh, so let's look at how a solution droplet uh, would react with a gas molecule. So in the early model, the solutions were known to be homogeneous, which means that the ions or the chemical compounds uh, in the solution are evenly distributed. So when, so when a reactant comes to the surface, it dissolves into the bulk, and then a reaction takes place in the bulk, and the products get escaped into the gas phase. So this is called a bulk reaction model. So in contrast, the current model uh, in the current model, the solutions are no longer considered homogeneous. Uh, so depending on the interactions between ions and the solvent, these uh, chemical components or the ions can be unevenly distributed in the solution. So in other words, that means that the surface of the solution can be vastly different from the bulk of the solution. So when a reactant comes to the surface, the reaction takes place at the interface of the solution and the uh, products get escaped into the gas phase. So these are more reasons for us to understand, to, to be able to, to understand the surfaces. So at the, because at this point, we know that the uh, solutions are heterogeneous, the surface is different, and the reaction takes place at the surface. So how are we going to do this? So to exp experimentally explore these uh, surfaces, we are going to use liquid jet ambient pressure X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. So here, briefly, what we do is we make the solution of the interest, uh, and then we inject that into our liquid jet, and that liquid jet can, be, uh, can uh, then get irradiated with X-rays. So these X-rays have enough uh, energy to knock out uh, core electrons of the elements in this, uh, in this liquid jet. So these ejected electrons then get collected at, uh, at the electron analyzer. So what kind of information that, uh, can, can, we gain, can we get from these electrons? So uh, these electrons have information to tell us uh, what chemical, uh, the chemical identity of the elements, not only qualitatively, but uh, we can also quantify the amount of, uh, amount of each element that are present in the solution. And more importantly, we can change the photon energy of these X-rays and specifically look at the surface and versus bulk. So if we, if we choose a uh, lower photon energy, we can look at the surface, and as we increase the photon energy of the X-rays, we can probe deeper into the bulk of the solution. So uh, as an example, I'm gonna show you some data uh, of, uh, that we collected on a potassium iodide solution. So potassium iodide dissolve in water and then exist as per positive potassium ions and negative iodide ions. So when we uh, did the experiments and calculated the concentration of iodine as a function of the probe depth, depth this is what we uh, get. So this is uh, the concentration of iodine as a function of the photon energy. In, on the, uh, in other words, uh, that's as a function of the probe depth. So you see the concentration of iodine at the surface is higher than concentration of the bulk. So which means that we have some uh, 
enhancement of iodine on the surface. This is an experimental observation. We don't know why iodine wants to come to the surface. So in order to, in order to explain that, Krista will explain the reasons behind the segregation of iodine to the surface. All right, so in order to obtain a molecular scale understanding of our system, we can use molecular dynamic simulations to model the air-water interface of an aqueous salt solution. So the idea is we're going to take a detailed look at a tiny simplified portion of this atmospheric aerosol using simulation. So we do this by first placing a water slab with our desired salt concentration into an extended simulation cell, and as it equilibrates, we see two interfaces form above and below the solution. So we can then precisely define the surface and then um, we can watch as it fluctuates with the movement of water molecules and ions in the solution. And so from our trajectories, we keep track of all the positions and velocities of all of our particles, and then we can perform various analyses on these trajectories to obtain information about the structure and composition of our solution, and we can also extract some thermodynamic and electrostatic terms as well. So if we want to look at the composition of our solution, we can construct a density profile where we plot the densities of the, each of the components is a function of the distance to the interface. So here, I don't know if this works. Um, here we have the interface defined as zero, and we're plotting the densities of iodide in purple and potassium in green. And as you move in from the interface, we see a large enhancement of the iodide density, about two and a half angstroms from the interface. So this indicates that iodide is really greatly enhanced right in this region. Um, and we also see a smaller peak in the potassium profile as well. And so we see some enhancement of potassium, about five angstroms from the surface. And so this agrees with our experimental findings that not only is the composition of the interface different from the bulk, but also that um, iodide's really enhanced right near the surface. And so we can also look at some other structural properties, such as the solvation shell of an ion. So we can keep track of however many waters participate in a solvation shell. And we can also look at things like their orientation towards or away from the ion. And this gives us a qualitative picture of the ion-water interactions. And we can go even farther and look at some thermodynamic terms, such as the Gibbs free energy of adsorption. So here we have a potential of mean force plot for each of the components in our solution. And we see a really large minimum in the iodide profile right near the surface. So this indicates that it, iodide's really greatly stabilized right near the surface. Um, we see a smaller peak in the potassium profile, and so we see some stabilization of potassium near the surface as well. So this is a really complicated problem as there are many forces that contribute to stabilizing or destabilizing the ions in different regions. But the advantage of using molecular dynamic simulations is that we can separate and identify the dominant driving forces that are responsible for um, the surface uh, segregation of ions. And so in the case of iodide, we know this is a really key component in understanding the chemistry of marine atmospheres. So um, with our combined experimental and theoretical approach, we've shown that the interface is a unique and chemically interesting place to be. Um, we know from experiment that the composition of the interface is different from the bulk. And from theory, we can also confirm the experimental findings, but we can also um, provide some insight into the forces that are responsible for driving the surface enhancement in a quantifiable way. So we'd like to thank you for your attention and happy to answer any questions.